What up, what up, this is Patrick Hayes, and in this video I wanna talk about weed and spirituality. I wanna talk about my thoughts, my conclusions from many years of experience with weed and spiritual practice, and I wanna talk about the pros and cons, and I wanna talk about what my conclusions have been um, with my relationship to cannabis. So, if you stick around to the end, I'm actually going to get into more particular explanations of how weed can affect not only your physiological capacity to have higher spiritual experiences, but your astral capacity to have higher spiritual experiences and how these two things kind of inter inter exchange with each other. So to start off, do I smoke weed? I do not. I don't smoke weed now. I did. I was an everyday smoker for many years and I was a part-time smoker for many years and you know, I, I let it all go. And um, I don't think that that's necessarily appropriate for everybody and I'll get into that, but for me, there's quite a few reasons why I did that. Now, if you ask me the question, does weed enhance spirituality? Um, I can't give a quite straight yes or no answer. What I'd have to say is that, well, it definitely can, and it oftentimes does, but it can also have um, negative effects if it's not used properly. So, as far as what it can do for you, is it can give you a spiritual opening. It can give you access to different spiritual states that you hadn't had before. It can tune you into different vibrations. It can help you to gain access to different levels or different dimensions of existence that you didn't previously have access to, or at least didn't know that you had access to. So it's actually a really, really powerful entheogen. And a lot of people don't really give it credit for how powerful of an entheogen it is because it's so common and people use it in such a uh, recreational way. But actually, it's really, really powerful. And um, I've had cannabis experiences that are more powerful than ayahuasca experiences. So um, it's, it's a different kind of experience though and, and the nature of the plant is quite unique. So then you may be asking, well, well why did you quit? If it give you access to all this, this amazing stuff, why did you actually stop smoking? Why aren't you still smoking now? And there's quite a few reasons why I quit smoking. One of the most obvious reasons was, and this is common for a lot of people, is that it really cut down on my capacity to complete things or be productive or, um, or really take action in my life. I found myself much more in this philosophical role where everything was there was so intense and I would process things so deeply that I felt like I was always in a state of processing. I, I didn't have enough action within me. And part of that was that it took my physical energy away. Um, for me, it was after I would ingest cannabis, I didn't need to even smoke it, even if I ingested it, like I ate it. Um, what would happen was I would, I, I would get so physiologically tired that my body would just not want to do things. So naturally I was more lazy and I would find myself spinning more in the uh, you know, ethereal realms, you could say. My, my mind would think a lot and I'd explore all these different spaces and the kind of information that would come across my plate, um, I would look at it really deeply from all these different angles and I'd go really deep and it would, it would really interface with me on a very deep level. But that was not necessarily efficient for um, being practical in the physical world. And so it took away from my capacity to show up as a person in my life. This is really common for a lot of people. Um, I'd say that's probably one of the number one complaints is um, uh, overeating and the incapacity to get things done, right? So loopiness. And um, so that's something you've probably heard or experienced before. But as I got deeper into what was actually going on, I started realizing that there are all these other things that were going on also. So one of the things is that um, it really imbalanced me. And I, I found that it was interesting because when I first started smoking weed, it felt like it balanced me in a really powerful way. Um, but it was such a really strong experience that over time it started showing me how imbalanced my sober state was. It was actually so imbalanced that I needed to use something as powerful as cannabis to bring me back into balance. And over time, I realized that it was actually a better idea for me to stabilize my sober state better so that I didn't need to use something that was so powerful to bring me back into balance. I think this is a common thing for a lot of people. You know, if you live a life where uh, you're really deep in a kind of like mundane matrix kind of existence. Uh, it can be really, really freeing to have something like cannabis where at night you can go and, and let yourself into these like amazing higher spaces because your everyday life is so, uh, it's so much of a grind. It's so much of like a, a mundane, like just showing up and going through the motions kind of experience that 
you really need something extra to kind of give you a head change and like open you up into something different and help you relax after a long day. And so I think for a period of time, it can be really useful for a lot of people, and it was for me, to use this as a tool. But eventually I came to understand that, you know, if I'm needing something this powerful to knock me back into place, this is creating a really high dynamic range. There's like this really high high and then a really low low. And when I say low, it's not like I was depressed or like beat down, though there were times of that, but that's not what I'm talking about in this video. What I'm saying is that it, 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 the scale had it tipped so intensely to either side, even though it created a kind of balance, it was, um, it was still not as smooth as I would have liked it to be. So what I found is that as I was able to stabilize a lot of the vibrations that I was able to access from these higher states with cannabis um, into my everyday life and create a lifestyle that was more in harmony with that expression and experience, then I didn't need cannabis as much to kind of break me through or settle me down or bring me into more of a balanced state. In other words, I realized my sober state was unhealthy and I was in a sense medicating it with cannabis and if I made my sober space more healthy, then I wouldn't need to medicate as much. And actually it was more balanced because then it was like I didn't need anything and there weren't any side effects and I could just like move at a smooth pace. The next thing I wanna talk about is the astral body. Because something happens when you smoke weed that is really potent. And this is that it opens up your astral body so that your astral body has access. Um, and in a sense, you can think of it like, like your astral body becomes much more permeable. Right? It's like the veil gets a lot thinner. And you have access to all these different um, subtle energies that are going on in the astral field that maybe you didn't have access to before. It opens you up to all sorts of really powerful things, even like planet energy. You can feel different planets. I mean, people call it tripped out and you might laugh, but you can feel different planets. You can feel all sorts of different entities and different energies moving around that you couldn't feel previously. And while that's really cool, and it's something that can teach you how to tune into different energies that you couldn't tune into before, um, um, what I noticed was that when I was putting myself in that state before I was doing like everyday things, because I got to a point where a lot of people have probably got to, where I was smoking weed all day every day at certain points in my life. And what I noticed was that um, things, they would embed so deeply into me. And oftentimes these were things that I didn't want to embed deeply into me. So like, you know, I would go to see a movie or I would, you know, have some experience and I would like pass some person on the street or I would like talk to somebody. And the fact that my astral body was so open it was, it was almost like it was too thin. I didn't have, uh, I didn't know how to create like a protection layer for myself. I didn't have that natural inborn protection layer. And this substance that ideally would be used more ceremonially in a safe space, I was using in my everyday life as I was doing everyday things. And so what was happening is I would have some experience, like I'd go to a movie or I'd like talk to some person and we'd have such a, like it would embed so deeply into me that it was like, I had to process like a bunch of different stuff regarding the energies that this person and had and it, and it just got too close into my field it was too intimate and you know for somebody that's maybe not that aware um, you you can develop all these different attachments spirit attachments entity attachments and you can um, basically let too many things into your field if you are walking around with an open astral field because you're using cannabis and you're just going to all these mundane places and you don't really know what's happening and so for me it was like this experience is supposed to be ceremonial you know, I had the realization, I was like, this is supposed to be a ceremonial experience. This isn't something that I just do and like walk around and do normal stuff with. Because, you know, in the everyday world, in the mundane world, there's a lot of things that, you know, I, I don't want to be that intimate with. It's almost like having like astral body sex with like every single energy like in the field. It's like, I, I don't actually want to involve myself that deeply with everything and especially with things that are low vibration. So I think it's important for us to be aware that we're opening our astral body when we do these things and that if we can continually open our astral body because we're continually smoking cannabis for long, long periods of time. And we can develop holes in the astral body that are really hard to fill up. And so that natural sheathing or the natural uh, membrane uh, density becomes really, really thin. And then we're constantly having to process stuff that otherwise we wouldn't have to process because it's, it's coming through and it's sticking to us. You know, another thing I noticed that if you've smoked cannabis on and off in your life, you probably noticed too, is the, the, the effect that it has on your dream recall. Because one of the things I noticed that a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people say this too, is that when they quit smoking weed, that dream recall came back really intensely. All of a sudden you can remember all your dreams and they're very vivid. And so this had me kind of um, interested in what's actually going on here. Why am I not remembering my dreams when I smoke weed? And 
part of the reason why I think it happens is because it's taking you into this liminal space that's quite dreamy um, during your waking state. And so you're not actually having the full sleeping dream experience that normally you would be having when you're sleeping. You know, and this brings me to another point that I wanted to make that I was mentioning earlier about um, the effect that this has on our physiological bodies. And one of the things that is, uh, that, that is, say, like a principle that I follow at this point is the idea of honoring my natural pharmacopoeia. What I mean by that is my biology, everyone's biology, is like a pharmacopoeia. And due to how we modulate our emotions and our thoughts and our, our relationship to ourself, we create different hormones, we create different neurotransmitters, we create all sorts of different chemicals inside our body that give us different experiences and can actually turn us on to different spiritual phenomena. So a more specific example of this is you could take anything that uh, stimulates tryptamine. So like ayahuasca is a tryptamine, um, uh, DMT is a tryptamine, psilocybin is a tryptamine, anything that activates your tryptamine center, which is connected to your DMT, your pineal gland. So this is your glandular system. Now the glandular system can be activated. The higher glandular system can be activated through different spiritual practices. And if I was to boil it down to anything, really it comes back to uh, raising love within your field. And that eventually will turn anything on. So there's a lot of different practices for being able to like modulate and, and turn yourself on. You can look at all these different mystical traditions that do these. But really what it's boiled down to is if you activate love within you strong enough, everything turns on. But anyway, the example is that when you activate your glandular system, your higher glandular system, you can start having DMT experiences without actually taking something to, to uh, you know, initiate that excretion of DMT. And I've actually had this experience several times and they're getting stronger and stronger. That's my ability to have a DMT-like experience while sober. So one of the things about doing something like cannabis on a regular basis is while it can stimulate some sort of uh, spiritual uh, like abilities or access in some way. If we're doing that regularly, then we deplete our body's natural capacity to do that. See, the thing is most people have never experienced anything like that. So when they experience it with weed, then it becomes like, well, weed is the way to do that. But actually, you can do these kinds of things on your own by learning how to modulate your own inner space. And this is not a quick process, this is something that happens over time, but what can happen is if you don't make the decision to start uh, learning how to do this naturally without exterior substances, then the issue with that is that you're, again, you're going to be dependent on these external things and that actually deregulates your body's capacity to do it naturally. So a great solution for this, I mean, if cannabis is, is really healing you, is to use CBD instead because with, without a bunch of THC, it's not going to open up your astral field and you can still get a lot of the health benefits of cannabis because cannabis is very much a healing medicine. So it can be used that way. But again, it's all about finding the, the right amounts of the right constituents of the plant in order to be in balance for you. So CBD is a great way of being able to have a lot of the health benefits without opening your astral body, and without creating um, an undue amount of lethargy or psychoactivity. So. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. If this video was really useful for you or you know somebody that this video might be really useful for, please share it with them. I would really appreciate for this message to get to anybody that could really use it. So thanks again for tuning in. One love. This is Patrick Hayes, and I'll talk to you next time.